Yeah, you, you're a professional. Everyone has a unique gift, and Mike, the creator of the One Life Podcast, believes most people don't know how to use their gifts or what they are. Mike wants you to see things from a different perspective and be true to yourself. The One Life Podcast unites the world through art, fashion, music, and film. It inspires, motivates, and creates positive energy, love, and compassion to all communities and creates an equal playing field for all. On the One Life Podcast, they cover topics like building relationships, overcoming adversity, habits of healthy people and much much more we only have one life to live be yourself and live your truth add the one life podcast to your playlist that's the number one in e life available on spotify amazon music apple podcast and your favorite podcast platform what's up y'all welcome to the one life podcast i am mike mic reed and in studio today we have refi from refi snacks with us in the building today how you doing sir doing amazing how are you i'm doing amazing as well Today awesome. is a beautiful Friday. We had a little bit of rain the last couple of days, but we always need rain, right? Yeah, it's nice and fresh out there. Exactly. I love that freshness. So good. Yes. So let's, uh, let's just jump into this, man. Thriving in the AV with Refi. Congratulations, first of all, on three years. Thank you. Because I know Thank three so years much. to be in a business is, seems like a long time. It seems like a long time, but it's really not. It's not. Yet. It all happened so fast. And thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate you coming to our hey, that, anniversary party. That event was amazing. Thank you. And I was talking to uh, my friend Diana, who actually works there. She's the human resource and accountant there. Okay, yeah. And she that. said, um, on a Friday, that place is never that packed. I mean, they they do good business. You know, shout out to Lucky Luke's, you know, yes. Sam over there. They, they do amazing business. But she was shocked when she came downstairs. She was like, wow, I've never seen so many people here on a Friday. Like, you, you know, packed that place up. I, I, I think we could have, like, bring more people. I'm definitely thankful for all the mm-hmm. people that were there. I think um, the people that are important came out. And that's all that matters to me. You know, right. like, I had such a great time with seeing all of you important people in our community come to support me. That is, and not only that, but also friends and family mm-hmm. that showed up. Um, you know, my brother uh, and uh, my sister-in-law, she's pregnant and okay. she can barely walk and she just went to show up and that oh, nice. just, it's so nice. Right. <clears throat> no, it's, it's great to have that um, <clears throat> community support and support from your family and friends. Yeah. Right. Cause that, that's all that matters. Right. That, that uh, support that you have. Yeah. I mean, I think um, sometimes we get into our head, right? Like I personally do when I'm like, why aren't people showing up to me? Like, you know, right. showing up for me at this special event. Mm-hmm. And um, I just kind of step back and realize and connect with myself and just say, you know, like all the people that matter were there mm-hmm. and um, everybody that supports me does it in different ways. They support yeah. me by posting. They don't necessarily have to go to an event. I have so many supporters. So mm-hmm. shout out to all of you out there mm-hmm. who buy my candy at the mall and buy my candy here soon to be at Pretty Little Poppy, Zero Degrees. Mm-hmm. They go at Lucky Luke and at the rim, <clears throat> the rim with the beer. Mm. So, um, you know, that's how they support me. They don't have to show up. So right. they just show up all the time. <laughs> no, and that's true. People support in their own ways. And I think that's what we got to kind of realize because we all are different. All are different. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and people, they, they do things differently. And sometimes we don't uh, we don't see it. And it kind of goes back to, you know, what I was talking about on the last show. We was talking about the five love languages because we all have five love languages. But a lot of people aren't familiar with it or in tune with it. So someone can actually um, showing you love and support, but they're talking in their own language and you're talking in a whole different language, even though there's five and we all use all five. But like, for instance, my love language is touch. My number one is touch. But if someone else's love language is quality time, all right, and they're just wanting to spend quality time with me and they're not touching me, then I can misconstrue that as, uh, you know, you're not paying attention to me, you're not supporting me, you're not loving me, but they are because they're with me. And that's to them, that's their love language. Mm. So when we get into things like that, then we can kind of understand, okay, like people, they really are different. And they show different, you know, emotions differently and, and supporting us differently. Like you said, you know, they don't have to really be there at the event, but they buy your candy. Yep. They share your posts. They like all your posts on social media. They follow you. So, yeah. And I think, um, it also like going back to love, like love is such a hard thing. Like, oh yeah. You know, like love to, that's a whole topic that we can sit on and talk for hours. Man, right. It like, is. <laughs> um, but, for me, like the biggest love is really um, 
seeing everybody that supports me mm -hmm. and they know that I'm like moving up and I'm like bringing all of my dreams to flourishing. Is that how right. you say it? Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. No, that's right. So, I mean, strive, striving in Navy. And congratulations <coughs> on your new web website launch. Yeah, so we launched our website on November 10th. It's now up and running. Um, it's, it's nice, by the way. I saw, I, saw, I saw your website. It's Thank really you. nice. Uh, it's not overwhelming. Okay. Like, it was easy to navigate through. Thank you for that. So, yeah. Yeah, we, we try to just navigate. We try to, uh, I worked on this website for a year with Jason over at emphasis.la. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, check him out on Instagram. And he created my website from scratch. Like I said, I need a calendar aspect. I need a vlog where I can keep my followers, um, you know, retained with the information that I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. But I also want them to shop and be able to see what we have coming in in January or February, right? Like right. our launches that we have. So, so far we have our dry mango, which is an all V vegan um, tamarind sauce uh, dry mango that comes with the chamoy mm. and um, that's launching in January and then we have our pre-order of our kindness matter shirt which is something similar to this it's just okay. really colorful um, but we wanted to put it there before the launch uh, and that's you know Jason has such a high detail for you know for everything so we made sure that we run that we you know run the website previous times make fake orders just to make sure that it worked and it's up and running now so everybody yeah. go support and order online no, absolutely absolutely so i actually want to talk to because your 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 logo on your hat keeps talking to me okay and you know and it's funny um wow. <laughs> when uh because i want to know the story behind it because you said there's a story behind it but yes. i was i was at uh at a bar one day and a guy came up to me and he looked at me he was like i know you rich and I was like, what? <laughs> he's like, anytime a that guy is. have a hat on that, I don't know what it is. That means he's rich. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that in your logo. It's like, because oh like somebody walk up to you and they're like, what is that? It's like, I'm you're rich. Definitely not rich. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you're rich oh, in God. kindness. Yes. That absolutely. Personality. Yes. So you are rich. Yes, I'm very so, rich. So see, person. when it comes to that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but tell me about the uh, the logo because when I first saw it, like yeah, because normally your logo has a circle around it, but when you yes. take this, remove the circle, it does look totally different. Even though now I can see like yes. the signature, but how did you come about doing it? So uh, maybe we can insert our, our logo here, like whenever you're editing this. Okay. But if you take a look at that logo, um, one day when I was uh, COVID had just been announced, like everybody's going into quarantine. Okay. And that's when I first started my business, right? And so I had lost uh, my both of my jobs. Mm -hmm. And they're like, we have to let you go because you're one of the newest hires here. Mm -hmm. So everybody, like, you know, has to get cut. So my mom and I started selling food in the backyard um, just to kind of survive COVID and the quarantine. She had also stopped working. And uh, I started selling my chamoy candy there and the agua frescas. That's what it really took oh, off okay. right in my backyard um selling food uh illegally let's just be honest here <laughs> yes. <laughs> you hey know, you was hustling you're getting your hustle we on. had to do yeah. um and then eventually we got shut down by this the public health department of of course you know wait like, you were doing that much well yeah so many people were coming that wow. somebody complained our neighbor complained because the hours were so good and the food of course yeah, like what do you order yourself yeah they're like what <laughs> what's happening over there you know um which uh, it, you know, everything happens for a reason. Right. So uh, one of the nights I was praying to God, I was like, I need to create my brand. And uh, people love the chamoy candy. So what if I put my branding into that? And uh, I literally sat there and said, like, please help me create this logo. And till this day, I cannot find the font. It is so like it is so or maybe I just haven't researched it like mm -hmm. long enough, but everything just came together like the circle the refi the snacks the ad the two dots right. and as you can see what i did here was we um took from that logo and kind of um reshaped it so that it fits in a beanie okay right so that because it's cold right. i wear a lot of beanies and these are available on my website at refisnacks.com you can get them and um you know they're like 3d printed so they're kind of thick but same you know same uh, logo perspective but just kind of uh, transforming it and that's a beautiful thing that all of us can do as business right. owners just um if you really know your brand if you really understand the brand mm -hmm. you know you can shape it in different shapes and exactly forms. Yeah. like our containers right mm -hmm. our gummy containers they were they started in containers because it was that was the vision that i had at that right. time 
Um, and really everybody just really dig to get in the container, right? But speaking, speak, being realistic, speak, speaking, what is it? Realistically speaking, yeah. my bad. Um, you want to put them in packs because they're easy to carry and, you know, you have to think about the bigger picture. Right, right. So, you know, that's the story of my logo. Like, God literally created my logo and I have faith in that. Right. No, and I love it. <laughs> but you say you can't, but I mean, you have a, a black and white image of it to where you can obviously do whatever you want with it now. Right? Yeah, so we had to get a vector file yeah. and then um, like a photo editor um, did it for me. So yeah. No, I, I love the logo. Yes, thank you. And I love that you got that you was able to, you know, you recognize that you can be creative with it and, you know, because it really is just a refi in it. Yeah. Because uh, people know it by now. You're all over the place. Yeah, I, I it was cool when I first started selling them last year. I think, it like, not a lot of people knew me mm -hmm. last year until I started obviously putting in the marketing and putting in the time to just show up to events. Like, right. it's so important to just show up to... Like, for example, International Men's Day that's coming this uh, right. Sunday, right, at the uh, uh, Bravery, Bravery yeah. uh, which uh, the Ventura Foundation and Eric A. Garcia's mm -hmm. foundation, Year Enough, uh, are putting together. And so I said, hey, can I donate 30 give backs to your event so that the men can feel appreciated, right? Doing that, just giving your product, right. right, and getting it in the hands of men, and not just men, but it could be an International Females Day or International Pie Day. Just mm -hmm. like donate, you know, put your brand out there. It's gonna cost, but that's part of the marketing. I mean, right. out of that, you can get a big contract. Who knows? You never know. You never know. No, I mean, and, and <coughs> since what's all, and, and I want, I want, I'm gonna touch on uh, the International Men's Day um, later on because there's a couple of things I want to talk to you about. Nice. You know, regard to that since we're two men here and okay. we're, we're on here um without without tanya without without the female today <laughs> the female energy which by the way i love the female energy no, i've been I do needing too. that in my no. life lately i'm like i need female energy you know yeah no and that's why i've always had a co-host female um because right. just the yin and the yang yeah this is great um but um just going back to the uh thriving in the av um are you where since you've been in business for three years, are you where you thought you would be in three years or are you further along or are you a little bit behind? I'm just about where I plan to be okay. in my three year, um, but it always feels like we're behind. Okay. And I think that's just the aspect of life. Like you always want to do better for yourself, right? Mm -hmm. But um, I had plans and I saw this TED talk by, um, I think it was like, somebody in the apple like mm. steve jobs or something and he said um which i'm sorry i can't recall right now but um he basically said like when you plan you need to plan five years right from now right and uh then i heard someone over at the at the fair which was i think dan the ceo of the fair here at the antelo valley and what a privilege he's such a nice mm. man and so much respect and he said well when you plan for five years, you are really planning for six because the first year is like setting yeah. your foot on, on. And I was like, oh, that's how you do it. Okay, so I'm barely in my second year then. Now, you know, we're yeah. celebrating three. Right. But it's so really it feels second, like yeah. two. Right. Because then I'm like, oh, OK, now I know exactly where I need to be next year. Yeah. You know, you, if no, you keep doing it enough. Because that first year you're you're learning. <clears throat> Yes. You know, because especially with any business, you're, you're learning the business, you're learning the do's and the don'ts and, you know, all that. Um, so, I mean, with that question, um, how did how do you stay thriving? I don't like to say small business. Cause I know tomorrow is small business Saturday. And I was just telling somebody else, uh, oh, mommy and me, uh, that uh, I'm going a, I'm to a change that. <laughs> it needs to be thriving Saturdays, thriving businesses. I know it don't rhyme, but... <laughs> I don't like small business because just the psychological standpoint of that, you know, I don't want people to stay small because you all, you guys are all thriving, especially you. Like I've, I've known you for a little over a year now and I've watched you and I've watched you grow. And I think even this last year, that's why I asked you, are you where you're supposed to be? Cause I've seen you just like a skyrocket, just shoot up. Like you're everywhere now. Wow. But how, how do you keep thriving out here in the AV? Um, I think we go once again to um, everything involves kindness. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like that's where it's at its core. That's what keeps me going, like kindness. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm just like, kindness matters, kindness matters. You know, just keep that in mind. Right. Um, so I think how I keep thriving in this community and the Antelope Valley is just by being kind to people. And even if they're not kind to me, 
Like, I know where I'm headed to. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I've worked on myself. I, I went through hell, right. let's just say. Uh, and I'm 25. And so a lot of people are like, oh, my gosh, you're mm-hmm. so young. Like, yes, for you. Like, you are building. And I'm like, yes. You're like, yes. You know, like, I want to inspire all mm-hmm. of the 20-year-olds right now. Like, get it, like, when you're 20. No, can I, and can I tell you something about yes. that? Because I'm, I'm about to be 53. And I've, I've always hung out with older, um, men. Um, like I've always, like, even at a young age, you know, I've always hung out with my sister and her friends and, and they're like a couple years older than me. So, because as, as a kid, we, we all look up, like we're not supposed to look down. I know some people do, but we're supposed to look up. And for the most part, most people, they look up. So I always took that a step further and I was always hanging out with older people because, I wanted to learn and I was always taught that most men don't mature until they're about 35, 38. Mm -hmm. And that is a fact that that is a true fact. So when I look at you and you say you're 25, like you are one of the rare ones out there. And that's an inspiration though, Mm -hmm. because it's how all men should be growing up. But unfortunately that's not the case. Yeah. Yeah, I know it firsthand. I know what you're talking about. You know. Yeah. So, Absolutely. I mean, how how did you how did you become that? Like, what 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 was that point in your life that you you had to just turn things around? I think the reality of of my life, mm-hmm. right? Like, once you realize that you're not where you want to be, uh-huh. and even like your family doesn't want to be where they want to be at. Sometimes it's hard to detach. Like, that's where I'm going through right now. Right. I'm finding that I have some sort of neglect problem when I was a child. And I don't know where exactly. I can't pinpoint it. Like, mm-hmm. to who, right? At this point, like, the fact that I understand that is so major to who I am. And, right. like, you're asking me, like, how I've gotten to this point. It's really just the, the, um, the experience like all the experience I've had, I think, you know, that's, that's the answer the experience. You know, uh, I don't know if you know who Eric Thomas is. Eric. Eric Thomas, he's a uh, motivational speaker. They okay. call him the hip hop preacher. Oh. Okay. He's super dope. Um, he's all over the internet. If you just uh, do hip hop preacher or ET. Um, he did this uh, video in this uh, interview. Well, not interview. It's, I don't know what you want to call it, but it's called the, um, the Guru. Mm. And he talks about how most people say they want to succeed, but most people, they just kind of want it. They don't really want it. They just kind of want it. And he talks about how you're not going to succeed until you want it as bad as you want to breathe. And the video, the Guru video is actually very inspiring. It talks about how this uh, guy um, um, saw this wealthy man and he said, hey, I want to be like you. And the guy was like, okay, if you want to be like me, then meet me at the beach at 4 a.m. Mm. At the beach at 4 a.m. Wow. And the guy went in a suit and everything, right? And he was like, why am I at the beach at 4 a.m.? The older guy was in the water. He was like, come in the water with me. Mm-hmm. The guy had a suit on at 4 a.m. Mm-hmm. And the guy was like, I got a suit on. But he went anyway, and then he got like waist deep, you know, or yeah, waist deep. And he was like, oh, I'm not doing this. I didn't come out here to swim. Like, you're playing games. Like, what are, what are we doing here? He's like, if you want to be successful, come out here with me. Anyway, he finally took him out there, and he got him up to his shoulder with water. Then he finally took his head and put it underneath water. And then he held him underneath water for a little bit, and then he brought him back up. And then he asked him a simple question. While you was underneath water, what did you want to do? Mm-hmm. I was like, breathe. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Until you... For success, until you want to really want success, you got to want it as bad as you want to breathe, just like how you did in that moment. Wow. Most people aren't like that. Mm. They say they want it. They just kind of want it. They see everything, like all the success we have. They see all the stuff we have. Like, oh, I want that. And you don't want it because you're not doing what it takes to actually do it. Okay. That's very Like the video is longer and it it has deeper meaning to it, but that's the gist of it. Like you're not going to be successful until – you really want it 
That's why when people say like you have to really like manifesting and all that, you got to really believe it. Yes. Like you got to believe you already have it. Yes. So like what you were saying a minute ago about how that moment in your life where you finally changed because you were just tired, like that was your moment. Like, no, I'm tired of this. Like, I don't want this life no more. Like, yeah. I want a different life. I was the same way when I was 14, mm-hmm. growing up in the hood. Like, I, at 14, I was like, I, I don't want to do this. Mm-hmm. Like, this is not me. Mm-hmm. And I left. I left friends and family. And, and, and I say this a lot. Like, even I heard Snoop Dogg say this one time. It's okay to leave your friends and family. I'm not saying don't ever talk to them. Yes. But sometimes you have to go over here to be in who you want to be. And a lot of people just don't understand that. Yeah, I also think like picking like um, piggybacking piggybacking on that. It's like not only do you need to want it, but you also everybody has like the sweet in them. Mm -hmm. They're capable of doing it. Yes. Everybody's capable of doing anything. 100%. Okay, um, I'm gonna share this. So I last last year I was going through a rough time finding myself, right? And and I gained a lot of weight. Mm-hmm. And then I got to the point where I was like, okay, I don't think this is who I am. I don't feel happy at this at this specific mm-hmm. um, picture of my life, right? And so I weighed myself, and I was like 310 pounds. And I was like, what, dude? Like, no, how did you get here? Like, you were doing so good. Look, you have your business. You have this. I had to remind myself of who the heck I am. I let that go just for life. You know, like, life happens. And uh, we all go through ups and downs. But now I'm I'm back at it again, right? And I'm like, okay, like, let's get back to it. Like, let's, let's work out. Let's eat healthy and make better choices. Not for the person that you're with, not for, you know, the, the brand, but for you. For you, right. So that you can be happy and be able to want it enough that you know you're capable of doing that. You know, I'm reading a book right now that's called Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. Oh, okay. That's interesting. I read a book a couple of years ago um, similar to this. That's called the Bradshaw family. It's actually a book my therapist gave me. He's like, you need to read this book. It's about system families and families in their systems. Like every family has a system and we're all born into a system. We're all born into the we system, Mm -hmm. which means when you was born, your name was given to you, your values, your beliefs, everything was given to you. Mm -hmm. Everything's given to you until you break that habit of being yourself because that, that's not who you truly are until you find yourself. Because you got to think about it. That's why the book is called Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. Since birth up until whenever you find that pivotal moment in your life, you're not yourself. You're, you're who someone told you you are mm. until you find yourself. And that's when you be, you break out of the we system and you become into the I system. Mm. So like you, you found yourself. Yeah. So it, it, it is okay to break out of your family, break out, you know, if your environment, your neighborhood, a lot of people are scared to do that because it's the fear. Yes. Most people are like, no family is tight. No, I get that. I understand that. But sometimes you have to leave your environment, especially if you don't like your environment. You have to leave to go find yourself. You can come back, visit, and yeah. all that, but sometimes you have to leave to go find yourself. But if, you, if you're constantly in this one environment that you know you don't like, but you're trying to stay true mm-hmm. to family and all this crap that people are telling you, you're never going to find your true self. And that's where a lot of people are stuck and angry and, and not happy with their lives. Yeah, it also has to do with the parents, I think. Yeah. You know, like a lot, like the parents influence everything that you're Mm -hmm. going to be. And so I hate to say this and put it this way, but, you know, we got to be honest with ourselves. Like, you have to break through those generational bad habits. Yes. They're not healthy, they're not helping anybody. Mm -hmm. That's not, you know, like, 
that's not what you strive for in kindness. Right. It, it, like, as much as you love them, if the system they're using is not who you are at your core, right? you have a bigger mission. You know, God has a... Maybe God is going to show someone something through you. You know, I, um, I had Fabian on the show, and um, I told him. Shout out to Fabian Hustles, by the way. Yes. That kid is amazing. Fabian. Um, he asked me, well, he did his own episode, and he asked me a question, what would I tell our youth? And my answer was, keep dreaming and protect your dream. Mm. And when I say protect your dream, don't tell nobody your dream. Not even your parents, because mm. guess what? They're going to put their fears onto you mm-hmm. and say, oh, no, you can't do that. Oh, no, you're not, you're not here to do that. It's yeah. like, even if it's something that no one's ever done before, and you're, but you're dreaming it, keep dreaming it, because maybe God put you here to be the first. Yeah. And a lot of kids, I mean, as adults, there's a, for example, where's the richest place in the world? The richest place in the world. Well, I would say like Dubai, right? Nope. Okay. Cemetery. Cemetery. Most people die with their dreams and their visions. Mm. All that wealth, they died because someone told them they couldn't do it. Yeah. Or they got discouraged. Some, somewhere along the line, they got discouraged and they figured out they couldn't do it. Sometimes it's hard. It is hard. You know. But like you said a minute ago, anybody can do anything they want to do. Yeah. Yeah, it's not going to be easy. We know that. It's a struggle. But if you're every, I truly believe 100% God gave everybody a gift. We just got to find that gift. And we have to have faith in that gift and trust it once we find it. It's not going to be easy. Mm-hmm. But once you find your gift, you're, you're going to soar and, and, and be successful. You're going to have bumps, like you said, in the first, the first year. It's a learning experience. You're going to have bumps, like Steve Harvey did that jump video. When you first jump, you're going to hit the rocks. You're yeah. going to get scrapes. You're going to get blood on you. Yeah. All that. Then eventually, you're going to soar. Mm-hmm. But that's just a battle. The battle won't see. You're going to go through it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So, I mean, nothing's nothing in life is easy. Nope. Right? So, I mean, speaking of that, you do a lot of events. Okay. Right? So, what? What? Um, how do you balance your well-being? So, going back to... I guess I was saying like where I lost myself is Mm -hmm. knowing like your routine. So having a routine is very important. I think that uh, is, I realized that you have to have a routine so that you are successful at what you do and the hat, you know, the, the habit of it. Right. Um, So a book that I read is uh, atomic habits where like you create system was what, which my friend Sam Lucky Luke Sam uh, recommended to me. And um, so once you have those systems in place, like, okay, you know that it's Monday. This is your system for this. Monday. Right. It's like humans are like machines. You have to mm-hmm. like literally create this whole script. And sometimes you have to write it down. Like, that's what it helps me. I'm like, okay, I'm going to write it down. Like, uh, I'm sorry. I have a book right when I get to my office of like checklist of what I need to do. And I need to finish before I go home. Mm-hmm. Period. If I need to stay till 6 p.m. sometimes, I'm like, all right, well, you're going to the gym late. Right. Because you were on, on TikTok. Right. You, you know, like, so I, I, I am, like, really hard on myself when it comes to that. As you should be. Yeah. But I, I truly believe in that uh, uh, morning. Like, I have a morning routine. I have the same checklist. Mm. Like, if you look at my phone every day, my list is so long. Like, so the one thing I don't do is say, okay, I'm, I'm going to stay here till I finish it. I just carry my list over to the next day yeah. because some things is like, I don't need done today. Yeah. Like, but it's like things that I want to do this week yes. or in the next couple things I want to do in the next couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. So I have them on my list. So I don't forget, but I do move them over um, every day, every morning I copy it and I, and I check what I did do and it's going to stay on the list until I finish it. Mm-hmm. At some point I do clear it, but my yeah. list is steady grows and grows and grows yeah. because like you said, writing things down. And I, and I was taught that from an executive of mine years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause I always thought I had great memory and he taught me to write things down. And uh, so I, I used to write things down. Right. <laughs> and it was funny because I used to write it down, but then he was like, you know, Mike, the trick to writing things down is you actually got to read it every day. 
Because hmm. I would just write it down in the book, then I wouldn't go back to the book. Oh, gosh. <laughs> but then yeah. when he said that, I was like, that kind of makes sense. Yeah. They're like, yeah, you kind of got to look at it every day. Yeah. <laughs> so then as I started doing that, um, I was like, wow, I got so much more accomplished. Mm -hmm. Like when you have things written down in front of you, it's like you don't have time to be on TikTok as much because you, 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 you have this list in front of you that you're literally looking at. Yeah. So when I have my list, I might have mine on my phone. Um, I literally look at it and I'm like, well, dang, I can't be on TikTok right, right now. Mm -hmm. Like I, there's, there's about two or three things that I got to get done today yeah. that I have to do. And then I'll do TikTok whatever later. Mm -hmm. But you're right about that. Once you have a list and you write things down, you can get so much done in a day. Also, like, I also have a huge advantage where, like, I don't have any kids mm -hmm. and I don't have, like, a partner. So I'm single. I'm ready to mingle. I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> <laughs> no I'm kidding. I'm single and I plan on staying single. That's uh, about right. Okay. Um, just because I'm not where I want to be mm -hmm. to have a relationship yet. Okay, that's right. And so I, I might meet somebody when I'm there. And some people might say, like, oh, but you're going to get too old by then. And it's like, I can still have fun. I, nobody said nothing about having yeah, fun. Yeah, have fun. But a relationship is, like, too much commitment for me yeah. right now. I, I want to get my brand to Trader Joe's, period. Okay, every day you better work on that. So, like, for me, like, that system that you have of making the list go to the next day, it wouldn't work for me. Right. And that's fine. No, it is. It's different. You know, like, like everything is different for everybody. Like yes. what works for me might not work for you. Right. Vice versa. What, right. what works for you yeah. not going to work for me. Yeah. But, it's, but we both have a system. Yes. You got to find a system that works for you. For you. Exactly. Definitely. And that, that's how it works. I mean, that's how everybody's successful. I mean, I, I, I tell everybody, like, you know, that's why I don't like giving people advice. Like I like to talk to people and kind of give them my experiences and you, you just take from it. Like you take yeah. whatever little piece that can work for you. The whole thing might not work for you. Yeah. Nothing might work for you. Wait, so I have a question for you. Can yes. I ask you? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> do you, how do you deal with the anxiety of like not, cause I know you said you push things to the next day, but do you go like, okay, this needs to get absolutely done today because there's a timeline. Yeah. But like I some for some reason still have a problem where like a thing is due for month of a month from now and I'm like already planning on it. And it's my like my my circle, right? My team will be like, dude, calm down. Like you just got through your anniversary party. Like, can you take a week and go home and rest? And I'm like, no. I'm here. Like, what are we doing? Are we putting shelves up? Okay, like let's do that. Like, let's do the mm. shelves. Um oh, uh, you know, like the following day, um, I had a date that I was going on and I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm so, like, I, it, I have to make time for that. But I make sure that everything was done that needed to get done and like plan ahead so that I can go on this particular date to right. the movies, right? With the friend. Um, so how do you deal with that anxiety? Um, years of experience. Oh. Um, honestly, because um, I used to be like that. To be honest with you. I mean, so my, my field is entertainment production. Mm -hmm. I've been doing that for over 35 years. My first five, 10 years, I was the same way. Like it was anxiety. It was sleeping two, three hours a night, mm -hmm. just up, making sure things are done. But luckily I had a um, big brother mentor who taught me about things. And as you go, you're, you're going to know um, like what needs to get done right now. Mm -hmm. Like I, I can do an event and, I can walk into that event that morning. Like, for instance, um, last year when I uh, did the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce Gala, at the last week prior, um, I had to take over and do the event because um, Diana had some other issues she had to take care of, like pressing emergency issues she had to take care of. So me and Mark, the president, we kind of took over the event. But it's easy for me to walk into something like that and be like, okay, let's do this and that because I've been doing it for so long. Like production <laughs> events to me is easy. And the, the day of the event, um, everybody was walk, running around like chickens with the head cut off. And they was coming to me, Mike, this, Mike, this. And I was like, first of all, calm down, relax. It's already the day of the event. It's going to be what it is. Most people won't understand when I, when I say something like that. Mm -hmm. Like we've already did the best we can. Mm -hmm. And that's all you can do hmm. is the best you can. Thank you. Right. So stressing over it, 
or I mean, or having this anxiety, especially the morning of the event. Wow. It's like, no, I'm en- going to write that down. Enjoy what you just did because the event is going to be amazing. Right. So I guess for me, it, it, it was really years of experience to just learning that. You did, you did the best you could, right? Yeah. I mean, and you got to be on, like you always say, you got to be honest with yourself. You, you really do the best you can. And that's all we can do. That's all anybody can ask of anybody. Do the best you can. Wow. It's all about effort for me. If someone did the best they can, I can't be mad at them. Effort. I can't expect them to, <clears throat> to give me a miracle. Mm-hmm. They not got. Mm. So we're all human mm. none of us is perfect mm-hmm. but if you give me the best you can i'm good with that i love it i'm cool with that that's so the, the morning of that event i was just like y'all relaxed like the event's gonna be what it is like we did an amazing job mm. we're there late the night before we did an amazing job mm-hmm. let's enjoy it now mm. why are you stressing wow so it, it was years of experience so even like on my list i know and i do have deadlines but i know i know my skill set Mm-hmm. I know I can do something the night before. Me personally, a little pressure, I get real creative. Mm. Like if something's due the next morning, I can go out. If something's due Monday morning, right? I can go out Sunday night, have fun, come back home about 10, 11 o'clock, have me a glass of wine, sit in my computer at home. <laughs> I have a home office and I can get to work. <laughs> That's you just had me, me at the though. Glass of wine, though. Huh? <laughs> you had me at the glass of wine. Oh, I'm a big wine guy, <laughs> but that's me, though. Wow! Like I've learned how to do that because working in TV, everything is so fast paced, mm-hmm. and things change overnight, mm-hmm. especially scripts and like, okay, we gotta do this. Gotta, like things are fast. If you ever worked on a a real network TV show, man, the way they move fast, like. So I've learned that skill set on how to work under pressure and under deadlines, like within hours. Yeah. Give me a cool drink. Put me in front of the computer. You say I can need this done in four hours. Got you. Wow. I got you. Like I, I can do it. I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> but no again, way. that's 35 years of experience, yeah. though. Yeah. Because I, I know how long it takes me to do everything. Mm-hmm. I know how long it takes me to design this. I know how long it takes me to edit all this at the right. end of the day. Like, I know. Yeah. Plus, again, the little secret to it is, going back to what you said earlier, I have a system. Mm-hmm. Like, when I get, when we finish hearing the show, I can have the show up in an hour. Period. Because I have a system already set up on my computer. To where it's just, it's like plug and play. Yeah. Because I already created everything. I have a question on that system. So, are you able to create systems for people? Yeah. Probably, huh? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've never done it. Uh, creative, well, I think it, well, I mean, for the shows that I worked for, but yeah. yeah, I'm starting a YouTube show. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, I can totally. I'm gonna. That's easy. Need your help. That's easy. <laughs> that's easy. <laughs> I just need like the intro, outro. No, exactly, and that's easy. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, again, for, for you, me, yeah. right? For me, it's easy. Yeah. Again, but that's just years of experience knowing how yeah. long it takes me to do things, how long it takes me to do anything. Also, a fast learner too. Yeah. So. Yeah, that helps me a lot too. Yeah, like not, I, you show me once, I'm like, okay, maybe oh yeah. one more time, and let me ask questions, and then we're good. Right, and especially if it's something that I'm interested mm-hmm. in. Oh, just show me one time, and I'm, I got it. And that's the thing. I think that's where people lack. Uh, they they are not sure of like the version of themselves. Like, yeah, I went to college to be in med school, and I wasn't good at it, and I gave up. I'm like, no. I'm just not there like that. That's not for me. Right. Like uh, you know, I could learn it and probably fail a couple of times because it was so hard, like biochemistry is so hard, you oh, know, yeah. and those people, oh my gosh, I applaud them. Like, thank you. Like, yes, you guys are so smart. That's just not, not my tea. Mm. Like, no, but, I mean, you recognize that though. Yeah. So I think like people sometimes are like, oh, I want to be a nurse because they make money. It's like, no, don't do that. Right. Do something that makes you happy. It's going to make you money regardless. Man, who did I just... Oh, somebody... I was out last night and something similar. Someone, a friend of mine, she was saying how she's getting a little older 
and she don't have kids. Mm. She was like, I want a baby, but she's single. And I was like, don't say that. She was like, why? I was like, only have a child. Do not put that pressure on yourself and go out there and have sex with somebody, with anybody, and just have a kid. Mm-hmm. Look at all the unhappy people that went through divorce and they dealing with all that drama. I said, have a child with someone you know you're going to get along mm. with, even if you guys break up, and you can have a healthy relationship raising your child. Don't go out there and say, oh, I want a kid. Now you end up with somebody that oh, you're going to hate. And, I mean, it's just so toxic. But a lot of people, women do that. Yes. Unfortunately, they do that because they just want a kid. And in the moment, the guy is nice, but it's horrible. There's a movie that I just saw that is called Radical. And it's on movies by uh, Eugenio Derbez, who is a huge Mexican influence actor, right? And okay. now it's producing. And um, this movie was talking about um, the A word, the abortion word. Okay. Right? And it was talking about like the radical, the ethics of it, right? And so it makes you think like the a little girl who is, I believe, 10 years old knows about moral philosophy of having a baby. Mm. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I wish people, like our, our younger generation, because education is so free now, is going to be in good hands. Mm-hmm. You know, they're going to make the good decisions because there's people now, you know, like we're, you know, war is going on. Yeah. Like they're bombing places with children. They don't care. Yeah, they don't. And the fact that we're allowing this to happen and it's like, well, like that's a whole other conversation it I'm not is. gonna get into, right? But I'm, I'm just I, my my example was saying like uh, ethics says that it's okay to abort your baby, whether you agree or disagree in abortion. If you're only creating a harm for the child, then it's best to abort the kid. Right? It's like why are you keep having babies? And I'm nobody to say this. Like, I'm a man, so I can't say that. But I'm also gay, so I I have those conversations with a lot of female. And it's like, don't have a baby if you're going to bring that baby to suffer. Right. Like, just, no. No, and I I agree with that. I mean, I I know so many women who have multiple kids, but they're struggling. And it's like, why are you bringing a child into the world? And you're already struggling. No. You had three already. Why are you bringing a fourth? Uh, yeah. Like that, that to me yeah. don't make sense. Um, to each his own. I mean, that's, that's a whole nother conversation. But yeah. Even like, like so when, when my son was born, right. Um, he was born with cerebral palsy and I was for the first couple of years, even the first year of that, of, of his birth, he went through so many surgeries and me and my wife at the time we was like, yeah, we're not having no more kids. Yeah. Because even though we we love our son and you know, like the birth of a child is, is great, but we didn't know how it happened. So that made us nervous. And what we had to go through that first year and what he had to go through, I was like, I don't want to bring a child into the world and they have to go through all those surgeries. And like it was yeah. like it was heartbreaking for yeah. me to see my child at one year old go through all these surgeries. Yeah. Um and so we was like, yeah, we don't have no more kids. But five years later, here come my daughter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so when she was like, she pregnant, we both was like, oh, my God. Mm-hmm. When I tell you that was the most stressful nine months, because, again, now we're. You don't know. Because when, when a child is born with a uh, disability, you really don't. It's not something like we you automatically think, dang, what did we do? What did you eat? Like, did you not exercise? Like, you start thinking all kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So when my daughter was born, man, when I tell you those nine months, <laughs> was like, I, I was like, sit down, relax, <laughs> like, only eat this. Are you stressed? Are you okay? Uh-huh. Like, we was making sure we was doing everything uh-huh. right, even though that's not the case, but yes. we were still taking not extra right, with right. extra precautions, yes. right? And so when my daughter came out, she, you know, she was fine, but, it, oh, my God, it was so stressful those nine yeah. months because I did not want my daughter to go through what my son went through. So, I mean, I, I get that aspect of it. Like, if I bring a child into the world, like, to suffer, like, absolutely, it don't make no sense to me. You know, um, anyways, uh, let, I want to discuss uh, what you were talking about earlier. International Men's Day. Okay. Tomorrow at uh, Braveries, presented by the um, Ventura Foundation and um, Eric, Eric Garcia, You Are Enough Foundation, or with Jackie. Uh, Jackie was just on the show last week, too. 
Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, that much. <laughs> that's good. Jackie's amazing. Yeah. So they put on this event. Um, I'm going, by the way. Okay. I know you're going to be there. I'll be there. Yeah, you're going to be there. Yeah. Of course you're going to be there. Yeah. You're giving out your bags. <laughs> but the stigma around men being so strong, mm. in your opinion, okay. how do we, how do we break that stigma? You're asking for my opinion. Yes, because I'm Jackie gave because Jackie gave a, a an alarming st- uh, st- 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 statistic. I can't say that word. Statistic. Thank you. <laughs> last week, over the last year, men's suicide has risen fifty percent. Over the last since I forgot what year it was, she said I think it was a year or two, maybe two years. Suicide rate today is forty nine thousand. Of that 49,000, 38,000 are men. Okay. That's a huge number uh-huh. to be for men. Uh-huh. And I get it. Just like how um, a few weeks ago we lost four deputies uh-huh. in a 24-hour period of uh-huh. suicide. Like men are suffering, uh-huh. but they're not talking about it. Because of the stigma that they got to be strong, they got to take care of their families, that, you know, they're not supposed to cry, they're not supposed to do all this stuff, and it's like, but it's killing our men. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Like, I, I want to see that. That's why I'm glad they're doing the International Men's Day. Um, they got to change. Yes. Because without, without the men population, like, what is our world coming to? Yeah, it's a hard, it's a hard, hard one, right? Yeah, it's it's really deep. I think that uh, it's a big conversation, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> but I think it starts within. It definitely starts within. Um, it starts within you, mm-hmm. you know, like you and trusting the Lord. Um, nobody's weak, right? For showing their emotions, you're actually smart. Um, so that needs to go. Right. The whole like men are men and they're not supposed to show any emotion. Screw that. Right. Yikes. If you live in that world, you know, it is 2023. Get help. Reach out. There's so much stuff out there, mm-hmm. you know, and um, I say this with like a sort of like personal inside joke that I have with like men that think that like they can't communicate with the LGBT people. Like, it's almost like the same, right? Because it's yeah. like, oh, I can't get help because I'm not gay. Right. It's like, no, but you're still a human being. Right. Like, leave the sex behind and leave, like, the male or female, just you as a mammal. Right. Stop Stop making things gender-related. Yeah, no, like, getting help it's is not, that has nothing to do with whether you're a right. female or a male. Right. Or, you, you know, like, are you talking to this individual who has speech problem, it has nothing to do with who you are. It's just a, your core, a human being, mm-hmm. need, and you need to take care of yourself. Right. No, I, you know, it's it's a long conversation, and I just, I can't convince people. I've kind right. of made up my mind already where I'm like, yeah, I'm not even going to try. Because right. I tried it with my dad, you know. Um my dad is very old school, Mexican, Hispanic, Latino. Um, and so he has a certain way of viewing things. Like, I want you at home at 11. Right. You're 25 years old. You have your own business. Um, you have your own car. But I want you home at 11. Right. And it's like, why do you want me home at 11? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, do you need help? Right. Like, <laughs> You know, and That's I know funny. he just does it from a caring point where he's like, no, I just care about you. And like, I want you home at 11. And it's like, dude, we I am old, you know, like I'm grown and you need help. Like, right. you know, like not only that, but like there's little things that my grandpa probably used to do and his dad. And then like now they're passed on into him and his all of his brothers. And they're a family of a brothers and one female mm-hmm. sister. Uh, that's tough. Two female sisters. Sorry, it's ten of them. So two female sisters and then the man. I feel bad for the poor woman. Yeah. Okay, like I, man, like 
I already have a hard trouble with my brother. He's so much he's small. And so um but he's a kind person. Like my dad and my and my brother, they're really hard working people. Right. I love them. You know, like yes, they're amazing people, but at the same time, I just made up my mind where I'm like, I can't help right. what they're thinking. I, I'm the same way with my one of my sisters, my older sisters. So I'm, I'm the baby at seven. Mm. And I have a um older sister who is tougher than any guy out there that I know. And she grew up in, like, she, she's a part of a gang. So she's, she's like your dad. She's old school. She hung around guys her all her life, you know, you know her um, gangster buddies and all that. So she's real old school. Men, men. Men are men, right? I have another sister of mine who has a son who's my nephew who um, has just transformed transgender. Mm. And my other my sister didn't like it, and I and, and for about maybe a year I tried to talk to her and like you know like you know it's okay like you know. Yeah. So finally one day you know she was on the phone with me and you know he he went fully transformed and you know she was I guess irritated about it, and I was like listen, it's 2023. I said. I have a lot of gay friends. I have a lot of transgender friends. I support whatever anybody wants to do that makes them happy. I said, I prefer him to be happy than put a bullet in his head because he doesn't like his life. Mm -hmm. I said, think of it from that perspective. Yeah. And when I said that to her, she was like, well, yeah, you're right. I love him. I don't want him to do that, but I'm still pissed. I said, okay, you have a right to be pissed. But it's his life. Yeah. It's your nephew yeah. or your yeah. niece now. <clears throat> so, you know, you got just got to look at it from, you know, a dis- different perspective. Like, I get it. Old school people are going to be old school people. Mm-hmm. I think there's nothing we can do to change that. Um, you know, um, uh, yeah, I, I, I've tried to, I tried to talk, but like you said, it's like old school. You can't, can't control people. Yeah. You know, you can just do again. Going back to just do the best you can. Mm. I, I I have the conversations, but that's all I can do. Yep. I have the conversation with you. If it stick, it stick. If it don't, that's on you. Yeah. You know, but it, it is to me it's sad um, because a lot of people, you know, they when they live in that let that lifestyle, you know, they're hurting and suffering because their loved ones aren't accepting them, mm-hmm. and that's pretty sad to me because we should love someone. Regardless, yeah. like as long as someone's happy, like isn't that all that matters? Like they're happy, yeah. Like be happy that they're happy. I record, yeah. Well, also I think like female have a lot of influence on this. Like your female energy could be there for men a little bit better in a sense. Mm-hmm. Um, like I know I, in my household, I grew up with like my mom being the strong, like voice of the house instead of my dad. So excuse me, my mom would call the shots right. in a sense. Right. And because they just don't want any problems and that's fine. But I think also like checking up on your boo, like, you know, just saying like, Hey, like, are you okay? Like, do you need help? Mental health help? Mm-hmm. Like, I know like the kids are running around. Like I, I tried my best, but like, should we get help? And that's a conversation that's totally valid. Right. And that's kind of what I was saying. Um, what I was kind of able to hear from your story where um, you told your sister, like, that's valid. Your feelings of feeling pissed are yeah. totally valid. Yeah, and it's okay. But look at the bigger picture. Right. It's, it's uh, we go once again to ethics. Mm-hmm. You have to weigh it out. You know, like, I, I love ethics and any ethics book. Like, I've just been into that lately. And so I think that it's made me a better person where I'm like, right. okay, I just have to step, like step outside of the shoe because it's not affecting me. Right. It's not my problem. I have to do my part and spread awareness mm-hmm. that there is help out there and we do that. Right. But that's really as much as we can do. Can we do more? Sure, absolutely we can, but not if we're not all in this together. Right. That's true. I like that. Thank you. I like that. That's that's a valid point. I mean, we we all it's gonna take all of us. Um, everybody's feeling is valid, mm-hmm. and it's okay to feel the way you feel. 
Um, but like you said, going down to ethics and morals and, you know, mm. you can't control people. You know, as long again, going back to what I said, as long as you're doing the best you can, I mean, what someone else do, it doesn't really affect you. And I even told her that. I said, how he's living his life doesn't affect you. Yeah. Doesn't affect your life in one bit. Yeah. As long as he's paying the bills. Even if he's paying the bills, it doesn't <laughs> affect your life. Like, you're still going to be who you are. Yeah. Right. It, you know what I mean? So it's like, that's the thing about people. When, when other people are like so judgmental on other people, like, why do people put so much energy in being judgmental? When whatever this person over here is doing doesn't affect you. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it doesn't affect your life. Like, you put so much in That's like wasted energy. Yeah. It's okay to have an opinion. Yeah. It's okay to feel the way you feel. Mm-hmm. But people put so much energy into it. It's like wasted energy. Like, you could be putting energy into something. Yeah, but they don't understand the, they don't understand, like, the movement of energy. That's right. the problem. Yeah. 100%, 100%. They're at another... Completely different matrix, right? Hundred percent, yeah. And that's just, that's just facts. So <clears throat> I, I know we're about to run out of time, and I, I don't want to keep you because I know you're a busy man. Uh, <laughs> I have time. <laughs> what one 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 last question for you? Yes, because you keep mentioning this, and I know you're all about this, and this is your brand. But I just need to hear it from you. What does kindness mean to you? Yes, you know, kindness for me means. Uh, walking into the store and smiling to people and um, wh- whoever you find, it doesn't matter who it is. You just, first motive is kindness. The motive, everything is mm. kindness. So if you get mad, you lower, you better pray to kindness. You know what I mean? Because just like, let it go. Remember you're kind. You're not that person. Right. So that's what kindness matters. That's, that's what kind of kind is, um, is for me like showing people that that's not who I am. That's definitely not to the level I'm gonna go down to, and I'm gonna be kind to you because you deserve mm-hmm. kindness as well. Just as much as I deserve kindness, and just how I'm giving it to you, I expect it and demand it back. Right. So, um, kindness is also, of course, the quality of life, right? Of that we're giving others and helping. But, and my little system. That's what it is, just motive. The motive of being kind, which means being at its core who you are, 100%. You know who you are and you're grounded. And so you're not hurting anyone. Mm-hmm. That's it. Just being kind, ultimately, it all comes back to wow. you. Being exactly. kind to yourself. I love that. And, you know, it, it's crazy because there's been times where, like, I've been screwed over and... Just recently, to be 100% honest, where, you know, I got screwed over on something, and I was like, you know what? If this was 20 years ago, I, I was a totally different Mike. Mm. This situation would be different right now. Mm. And sometimes oh, hell yeah. when people do things, I be, it, it crosses my mind. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what? Don't make me go back to the old Mike. And that's okay. <laughs> and please don't forget that, Mike. No, I know. But, but my point to that is... I, I have to, I always have to catch myself and say, you know what? I know I didn't do none to this person. Whatever they're doing and how, because they, they're acting out or why they screwed me over because somebody else screwed them over doesn't mean I need to react the same way. Oh, yes. So I'm going to let them deal with that, but I'm, I'm still going to be the new, not the new me, but the growth me. The I'm better gonna, version the of better, me. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to stay this person. Because I like this person better. Yes. I don't like the person that I was 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. To be honest with you, I was straight up hood. I was ghetto as fuck. Like, but I, I, I didn't like that. And I had to, I had to grow out of, out of it. But I like I liked the version I am now. You weren't happy in that version, right? No, I wasn't. That, 100%. Right. That's what I keep talking about. Like, yeah. you're not happy in that version. Yeah. You have to find that version. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. So, once people do things to me now, um, that's why I, I love what you said about kindness. It's the motive. I'm always kind to people. First thing, uh, even when I'm walking down the street, I'm always high to someone. Someone don't say hi back. Hey, you know what? Again, I did the best I can. Mm-hmm. I said hi. If you're going through something, I'll pray for you. I'm sorry. But if you don't want to respond, if, if you do something to me, whatever, I know you, you're going through something, so I don't take it personal. And I just learned all of this, by the way. 
Like, please, God, don't think I've been like this all my oh. life. Hell no. Okay, um, let's keep it real here. So I went through a relationship a year and five months with this person, and um, I learned so much from being in a relationship with this specific person where I was like, oh, okay, yeah, like, no. No, Refi, like, you're really fucking up. I'm sorry. We're going to, you know, we're going to be real. Um, first of all, you're settling for, like, the best thing out here. Like, out of everything, you kind of settle for, like, the best because it feels comfortable. Mm -hmm. Because it feels nice, mm -hmm. and you don't want to feel lonely. Right. But at the end, you have to forget how you feel and remember what you deserve. Ooh, say that again. You have to forget how you feel and remember what you deserve. Wow, I love it. That is the, so what, true. Listen, whatever you know, stuff they have going on, that has absolutely zero to do with you. Zero. And I learned this through being through positive people. You have, you know, you have to step outside of the circle. For now, I'm like that. Like, right. you know, I'm sorry. I just, I can't. Like, I'm going to be kind to people and I'm going to show them kindness and help the community and actually do it, not just talk about it. Like, right. we have an annual uh, snack drive. Do you mind if I take a quick second? No, to, okay. absolutely, 100%. So, um, Refi Snacks hosts a annual snack drive where we collect non-perishable uh, snack items like Rice Krispies, chips, gum, uh, anything that doesn't go bad, right? Like mm -hmm. candy. So, Refi Snacks, we donate um, candy. And then during the toy distribution that the Salvation Army puts together with City of Lancaster, um, we pass out the candy. So, this year, we got the um, tremendous privilege to be partner up with the city of Lancaster. Okay. They're supporting this project. So city hall is one of the drop off locations where you guys can drop off these candies and really just spread joy through the kids. Um, I know that these holidays, I personally know they're going to be hard. Um, yeah. Everything is super expensive and, yeah. you know, it's really it feels like a depression. You know, people say silent depression. I don't know, really know the definition, but uh, once again, Let's help our community. Let's give uh, candies because when you see this kid smile, like they sometimes they their parents can't afford mm. literally like a Christmas gift. So right. this is where the Salvation Army, City of Lancaster, Refi Snacks, Lucky Luke, uh, Azteca, Adrian, Zero Degrees, all come together and really show up for our community. I love so it. Please donate. And is there a deadline to it or? Yeah, so we started collecting snacks um, Monday, uh, okay. and then uh, we are stopping December 18th. 18th. The snack, the toy drive ends uh, December 18th, and then we have to go through all the candies and all of the snacks just for precaution with City of Lancaster. Right. They are a government organization, so uh, we have a bunch of volunteers. We're going to do that, separate them, and then obviously put them out so the kids can grab them. So make sure you check that out, guys. Nice. I'm definitely yeah. going to uh, try to grab some stuff and bring it over to you guys because I love that. Thank you. Because it is going to be hard, like you said. Um, this year, I feel like it's going to be a little rougher. It's also an original concept. Like it is. We, as Refi Snacks, we have the annual snack drive. It's our third year doing it, and so we're just thankful to have the opportunity with City of Lancaster uh, for seeing us and seeing our small efforts to make this community better. No, oh, and shout out to the city of Lancaster because they um, you've been doing a lot with them lately. Yeah, I have. I it's, was at State of the City yeah. with City of Lancaster. We got catered out. And then we also, of course, did uh, hung at the hangar. And mm -hmm. um, the whole team there, right, the city parks and recreations, they do such a great job at uh, executing this project. It's such a major project. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think people see that a lot, like what go, really goes into it. Mm -hmm. But uh, Tanya, Sonia uh, is uh, um, uh, amazing people who really the director over there and they're approachable people as well so that's really cool that you can uh, like yeah. you know give them feedback and say like it went great it didn't go good mm -hmm. um, so working with them closely with the parks and recreations of city of Lancaster has helped me develop my brand and to adapt of what the city needs from me right so I love always it. remember to adapt yeah oh pivot and adapt absolutely <laughs> well man Refi as always, I uh, appreciate you. I thank you uh, for being a pillar in the community because you are uh, what you've done, especially since I've known you over this past year um, in this community. You made a huge impact. You made a huge impact in my life because likes, 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 right? And the kindness that you show because you do show that in everything you do at every event. I mean, even when you're not there, just your booth there, when I see it, I get smiles. Oh. They're because I, oh, look, Refi's here. 
Like, you know what I mean? Because I know what you're about and I know what your, your product is about. And like, you don't like, I think you've created something to where you don't even physically have to be there. Like just seeing your booth and your, and your brand and your logo is like, Oh, Rafi's a part of this. Like wow. it just brings out the kindness and wow. that's pretty dope. That's nice. Thank you. That, Thank that, you so that's much. hard to do one in a brand. Right. But you've done it and you've done it well. Thank you. And I appreciate it. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me on your show and your podcast. And it's just really amazing that you have a brand new location and it's all working out. The the keep doing what you're doing. I mean, amazing work showing all of the you really give a scope of what the community is really like without the filter. So I appreciate that. Thank you. I like the realness that the the show brings, the value that it brings for me, right? Like as a business owner, I don't necessarily have time to sit there and listen to a whole podcast, but you have different formats. And I love that because I can just put it and make a shelf or something, you know, and I'm just kind of listening and I'll fast forward sometimes where I'm like, okay, this isn't, you know, like, no, okay. Like, yes, let's go back. I'll take notes and not just your podcast, but different people, but yours stands out for me specifically because of the raw, um, raw feeling of Mm -hmm. like getting to know people. You want to get to know people. You're not just doing it because you want to go know their brand. No, I want to really? know. No, because again, like I was saying earlier on in the show, God gave everybody a gift. Everybody has a story, and I, I truly believe that if you get to know someone's story, then you're going to support them, especially the small businesses out there. Yeah. Get to know why why they make their tumblers or you know whatever they make oh, or yeah. the the dip chocolates like yeah. um, Nicole, like you know. Get to know their story and get yeah. to know that person. This new product here. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> so cute. I mean, just the present presentation is incredible. I love it. So <laughs> it's cute. like you don't even want to open it. <laughs> yeah, and so now I'm going to hit her up and be like, hey, like, I have a huge event. Can I sell your candy there? And, like, we both win. Who does it? Uh, her name is J3Js. Um, and oh. I don't know what they... Oh, wait, 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 wait. J3Js? J3... Oh, J and Js. J oh is that J and J J and J okay okay oh uh, you know what when you say three J's I thought that was um, Jennifer with oh, the cookies okay. no yeah three and J's right three and J's, J's yeah yes, yes. shout out so I was like I was like wait a minute she did with love those two <laughs> uh, yeah no she has amazing cookies um, I love how real she is by the way she is oh gosh she's such an angel such yes. a sweetie she's my partner in um, in the cap class that we're doing um, cool. and um, we actually and she's my partner in our <clears throat> impact project so at the at the end of the cap class. You know, you're supposed to get together with one or two people or a couple of people and um, do an impact project for the for the community. So Jen is actually one of my partners. Like we did, uh, we came up with the truth booth mm. that uh, we're going to be um, having at some of these events, you know, going forward. It's um, where people, you know, a lot of people hold on to things. Like, and, and as much as we want people to talk to someone about their feelings or, the, or their truth or their wrongdoing or whatever it is, uh, we created this platform to where, you know what, it's a scientific fact that if you write something down and just let it go, sometimes people write things down, they go to the beach and then they burn it and they let it go. Mm. Uh, it, it's a healing process. It's Sounds a healing healthy. thing. Yes, yeah. it's really healthy. So we can't create it, the truth booth to where we're going to have this booth, you know, at certain events. And it's, a, it's an online thing as well where people can anonymously just write down what's bothering them. Because when you hold all that stuff in, it becomes heavy. Yeah. And the longer you hold it in, the heavier it gets. Like and that. you have to release it somewhere. So it's an anonymous thing where we don't know who said what, but they, they release it. And um, once a month on a Tuesday, it's called Tuesday, Tuesday's Truth, presented by the Truth Booth. Um, we talk about it on the show. Wow. So last, last week when we had Jackie here, we talked about one of the truths. Cool. So yeah. Uh, so like she's my project. Shout out to Jen. I mean, because she actually yes. came up with the idea. And, uh, yes. <laughs> Jen is amazing, right? Well, maybe we can have that booth at the uh, AB Summerfest, which is my event over okay. at the AB Fairgrounds on August seventeenth uh, of to. next year. So. Yeah. yeah, and we met with the city of Palmdale uh, last oh. week. We met with um, the superintendents of the schools out here because we want to put it in schools, nice. and they loved it. Cool. Yeah, so it's a great really thing. happy. Yes. Yeah, so, anyways, again, thank you again, man. Thank you for yeah. your kind words. Uh, appreciate you. Thank you for being one of my platinum sponsors, man. Oh. I really truly appreciate you on that one as well, and supporting my new spot here and uh, my new venture because I plan on you know bringing a lot more people on here. And so I want to tell everybody stories like yours. I mean, everybody's stories is incredible, and I feel like the, the community deserves to know it and get to know you better. And yeah. that's that's where the support of the community comes in. 
Yeah, I, I love the opportunity of having my like own kind of slot here, right? Because um, I really get to tell my followers right. like what I'm doing, like, hey, the snack driver, hey, yes. this or where I am in life. So I look forward to continue being sponsored and just sharing what I'm up to with you. So appreciate it. No, thank I you. would love to. No. <laughs> yes. All right. So any last right. words or? Uh, you can follow me at Refi Snacks on Facebook, Instagram, and also our new YouTube channel, Refi Snacks, where we'll be interviewing young entrepreneurs like myself. Thank you so much for supporting me and supporting my movement of Kindness Matters. Don't forget to order your short and check out my new website. All right, y'all. We out of here. Thank you again. Thank you. <laughs>